will do five acts of securities. Typically in this particular unit, there is a lot of overlap with your Companies Act paper also. So typically what happens is uh, in Companies Act, whenever you try to do a buyback, there's a limit on the amount of buyback that you can actually do under Companies Act, typically. That is considered to be 25% of your total paid up capital and free reserve, which is nothing but your uh, net worth. So in other words, in Companies Act, it says that if you want to do buyback, your company should not have failed a previous buyback before this. That is one of the conditions. So in buyback, there are actually two types of buyback. One is buyback with the board of directors approval and the other is buyback with the general meeting approval. If you're doing less than 10% of your net worth and the amount of shares you want to buy back is less than 10%, then you only require a board resolution. And in case you are getting a buyback of more than 10%, you can maximum do up to 25%. And for that, you require a special resolution. This is the primary criteria for doing any buyback under companies. That obviously your company should not be fraudulent. Your owner should not have committed any fraud. You should not have been debarred from the capital markets. The usual points that we have studied in other chapters regarding you being a good company, you not defrauding anyone, you not repaying back someone's money, you always being on time with your interest and dividend payments. All of that applies here also. But in terms of resolution, these are the two things that you need to keep in mind with respect to buyback, which is part of your unit 16. But in addition to this, you also need to remember that buyback doesn't just involve uh, ROC if you are a listed company. You also need uh, SEBI to be involved in this process, right? So whenever SEBI is involved in this process, the only requirement for you is you have to obtain in principle approval from the stock exchanges. From whichever stock exchange that you are listed, you have to obtain an in-principle approval from them and you have to ensure that you delist those securities that you are buying back. So you are buying back mainly for cancellation. So another thing you need to remember is once buyback is over, <clears throat> you have to destroy the share certificates if there are share certificates and since you are a listed company there will probably be no share certificates so you have to debit the dmat account that all of these people who have participated in this buyback have basically provided you their shares from their dmat account they have to be cancelled so there is a reduction of share capital in a buyback. So in summary, if you really have to combine all of these points, buyback basically involves two types of resolutions. One is obviously board resolution if you are buying back less than 10% of net worth. If you're buying back more than 10% and less than 25%, then you would have to obviously take the approval of the shareholders in a general meeting by way of special resolution. So resolution is board or special depending on scenario. You also need to take in principle approval from the stock exchange in order for you to complete the buyback successfully. In addition to this, you should also ensure that you destroy the share certificates if there are any. And it results in a reduction of 
share capital overall. And when you say net worth, net worth means paid up capital plus free reserves. That is what this net worth means. It is a combination of paid up share capital plus free reserves of the company. Uh, in addition to this, make sure that your debt equity ratio is 2 is to 1, which is your ideal debt equity ratio. Whenever you do buyback, you have to ensure that uh, the unsecured and secured debts of the company are at least more than two times the equity. So the minimum debt equity ratio that you need to have is two is to one. It can be three is to one, it can be four is to one, it can be five is to one before the buyback, but it cannot be lower than two is to one. That is considered to be ideal. Wait, I think I told it the wrong way. Uh, if it is more than 2 is to 1, then SEBI will not approve. If it is less than 2 is to 1, SEBI will approve. So you cannot borrow higher than two times the amount of equity that your company has. So if your equity is 1 crore, your debt cannot be more than 2 crores. It can be less than 2 crores. SEBI will then go ahead and approve your buyback. So that is another rule to remember. In addition to this, make sure that all the shares that are being bought back are fully paid shares no partly paid shares can be bought back because if it's partly paid you basically still have to recover some money from them which doesn't make any sense because you are taking back the shares and returning their money in case of a buyback right so only fully paid shares can be bought back it's a great way to reduce your capital so there has to be a consequent reduction of capital and you can use three methods or modes to do this buyback. Mode number one, you can use your free reserves. You can capitalize them. You can use your uh, securities premium account. And then you can also uh, use the proceeds from a earlier issue. So let's say you issued a debenture. You raised 20 crores by issuing debentures, you take that money and you give that money to your shareholders and buy back their shares. That's allowed. But if you issued equity shares, you cannot buy back equity shares. It has to be some other security, basically. That is what is required, usually. So whenever you are using any money to pay the shareholders for the buyback, you can capitalize your free reserves and security spin account or you can issue a debenture or a preference share or some other security and then probably go ahead and use that money to pay for the shares that are bought back. You also need to ensure that you have not defaulted. So no default in multiple things. Number one, company can issue uh, equity shares company can issue preference shares, company can issue debentures and bonds. Company can also accept deposits as a company, right? So there should be no default in previous buyback of equity shares. There should be no default in redemption of preference shares. There should be no default in redemption of debentures and there should be no default in repayment of your fixed deposits that you have accepted from the public or otherwise and for equity shares there should also be no default in payment of dividend if you have declared a dividend you should have paid it as a company for preference share also there should not have been any default in payment of any previous dividend for debentures you don't pay dividend you pay interest so there should be no default in payment of interest and for deposits also you pay interest only and if you have taken any loans also there should be no default in repayment of the loan principal amount or interest amount these are your 10 defaults if a company does any of these if the company has defaulted in 
buyback of its ET shares previously, redemption of its due preference shares, redemption of its debentures which are due, repayment of its deposits or repayment of its loans, and if the company has defaulted in payment of any of its previous declared dividend, whether equity or preference, and whether the company has defaulted in payment of interest on debentures, interest on deposits, and interest on loans, such a company is not a good company and such a company will not be allowed to do any buyback. Not only buyback, the company will not be allowed to do any other significant activity as an entity. So you can use these 10 defaults and can pretty much use it for every answer. Whenever you are confused regarding a particular answer, you can include these points in those answers. A company which has defaulted in this will not be allowed to do, for example, let's take one of the chapters, uh, take over code. If a company has defaulted in any of this, the company will not be allowed to take over another company. Let's say you are a promoter and you want to do an IPO. If you have defaulted in any of these 10, you will not be allowed to do an IPO. If you have defaulted in these 10, you will not be allowed to do an FPO. You will not be allowed to take loans. You will not be allowed to issue preference shares. You will not be allowed to issue even share-based employee benefits, which we saw in the previous chapter. That will also be not allowed. If you have defaulted in these, you are basically a bad company. So make sure that you are ensuring this. And obviously, in addition to all of this, your articles of association should be checked first. If AOA allows you to do a buyback, then only you can do a buyback. If your AOA does not allow, you have to first alter the articles of association by passing one more SR. So instead of one SR, you will end up passing two SRs. Two special resolution will be required if your articles doesn't allow a buyback. So when you're starting a company itself, in your articles, make sure you include a clause for buyback. Uh, like any other process, whether you're issuing ESOPs, whether you're issuing share-based employee benefits, the entire process should be completed within one year. From the date of starting to the date of ending of the buyback, the entire process should not exceed more than one year from the date of board resolution. Initially, when the board of directors approved the buyback from that date, you have one year time to complete the buyback. Okay. And always ensure that you comply with Companies Act. Till now, we have discussed only Companies Act. What are the points we have discussed? I'll go back from the beginning and tell you the same. These are all just points that you have to remember in this unit. Very straightforward unit. So first, how much buyback can you do? If you're doing less than 10% of net worth, you need board resolution. If you're doing 25% of net worth, you require special resolution. 25% is the maximum. 25% of what? 25% of net worth. Your debt equity ratio cannot be more than 2 is to 1. It can be less than 2 is to 1 uh, post buyback. Net worth means paid up capital plus free reserves. Your company should obtain in principle approval from stock exchanges. Your company should destroy any share certificates that it receives from the shareholders post buyback. And it should result in reduction of share capital. Uh, it should be fully paid shares. It can use free, free reserves, security premium or proceeds. Uh, and it should not have done any of these because so this is pretty much what this chapter is all about. I think I'm running out of charge. So this, uh, stay tuned. I will log in from another device. Don't log off. And heavy regulations and till, the, till now whatever process we studied is the common process for both Companies Act as well as uh, SEBI regulations. Now, uh, if you are a part of a listed company setup as a CS, you have to ensure you follow certain additional processes, which starts with what is called as public announcement. So the first additional step that you are taking as a CS of a listed company is you have to make a public announcement. This word you will repeat 
uh, and find it uh, repeated multiple times throughout the syllabus. This public announcement usually is done within two days, is two working days of the declaration of buyback by the board. Whenever the board passed the board resolution, right? Within two working days of that, you will have to make a public announcement. And then in this public announcement, you have to also mention, since you're a listed company, what are the provisions you're making for the postal ballot? All listed companies can only do buyback through postal ballot, meaning you have to send letters to each and every shareholder of your company through post and they have to respond, respond back by post. Only then you can count the resolution for the purposes of special resolution in order for you to achieve three-fourth majority. Okay. And from the time you make this announcement, you should complete the buyback within 30 days. Buyback meaning you should return money to all the shareholders within 30 days. So always ensure that you are on track to complete the buyback on time. Whenever you are doing postal ballot, obviously dispatch will be through post. But apart from this, additional electronic means can also be used to inform the shareholders about the buyback, meaning that in addition to the postal ballot, you also can send additionally an email or a message to them reminding about their participation in the postal ballot. Any person who participate in the postal ballot uh, need not participate in the buyback also. So they are excluded from this entire process of buyback itself. So SEBI allows these shares to be returned back to the company. And once the company receives all these shares back, they could be physical share or electronic shares. So as a company, you have to number one, maintain register of buyback. Additionally, you have to maintain details of consideration paid. How much money you have paid to each shareholder, you have to maintain details of that. You have to maintain details of cancelled shares. When did you receive the shares back and when did you cancel them? When did you destroy them if it's a physical share certificate? And when did you debit the DMAT account and ended up reducing the share capital? That date as well as the details of how many shares have to be also entered. And if you have physical share certificate, then date of physical extinguishment. The process of burning or destroying your share certificate is called as extinguishing the share certificate. So however you extinguish, typically people burn the share certificate so that no duplicates are created. The main reason why we burn the old share certificate is to ensure that nobody else gets a hold of these shares and claims to be the owner and starts receiving dividend from the company in the future. To avoid that, if there is a physical share certificate, it is extinguished. And if it's an electronic share certificate, it is automatically cancelled. Whenever you do buyback, always ensure that you also, under SEBI regulations, open an escrow account. Escrow account obligations we've already learned. For this chapter, escrow account obligations are for 100 crores. So for first 100 crores, 25%. For any buyback beyond 100 crores, for the excess amount, you will give 10%. And deposit as a company into this escrow account, you will deposit this much money and you will open a separate bank account in order to do the same. That is what buyback is all about with respect to uh, SEBI regulations. So once again, from the beginning, Unit 16 talks about buyback. Buyback is the process by which a reduction of share capital is affected by buying back the equity shares from the existing shareholders of the company. 
you can do this in two ways. The maximum buyback that you can do is 25% of the net worth. Net worth means paid up capital and free reserves. You cannot do a buyback beyond one fourth of your existing net worth. If you want to do beyond 10%, up to 25%, you have to pass a special resolution. And if you're doing below 10% buyback, then you only require a board resolution. The first and foremost criteria is your maximum debt equity ratio can be two is to one. It cannot go beyond that. Otherwise, SEBI and stock exchanges will not approve your application and in principle approval for buyback. So obviously, you have to apply for in principle approval with the stock exchange. Stock exchange usually send a copy to SEBI also. Once you receive this in principle approval application as a stock exchange, it is your duty to report to SEBI that a company wants to buy back its share. So SEBI will also look into this document and stock exchange will also look into the document. Once you ensure that this in principle approval is received, you after the completion of buyback should destroy this share certificate and it results in reduction of capital. So this is the effect of buyback. How does buyback practically work? Buyback is done in three modes. You can utilize free reserves. You can utilize securities premium account or you can utilize the issue or proceeds from the issue of a debenture or a preference share or a different class of shares other than the one that you are buying back. So if you are buying back ordinary shares, you can issue preference shares, debentures and sweat equity shares. And you can use that money to pay the shareholders who are participating in the money. Make sure that only fully paid shares are being bought back. Partly paid shares should not be. The most important topic from this chapter is the 10 defaults, which you can repeat for every question that you are not sure of answering. Whenever a company commits a default in buying back its equity shares, so it started a buyback, but it didn't, couldn't finish it on time or it couldn't repay its shareholders on time. It could not redeem its preference shares. It could not redeem its debentures on time. It could not repay its deposits or loans on time. Such a company is not considered to be a financially viable company and such companies will not be allowed to do buyback. Such companies, if they fail in repaying their uh, principal amount or even paying the dividends for equity and preference share, for paying the interest on time for debentures, deposits, and loans, if you fail to do it and if you have committed a default, then you'll not be allowed to do a buyback. So you should ensure that you have no default in any of these 10 scenarios. Once you ensure this, also check your AOA. Before even you start buyback, you have to ensure you are not done any of these 10 defaults and your articles of association allows you to do a buyback. If your AOA is silent, then you have to alter your AOA and for alteration of AOA, you require one more special resolution. Once you are ready, make sure that you uh, get the board resolution approved first to get the board of directors together. Get them to agree that the company is ready to do a buyback by passing a board resolution. And once you pass the board resolution, within one year, the buyback should be complete. After the board resolution, obviously, you have to convene the general meeting, get other approvals from the shareholders, etc. But even before that, you have to make a public announcement. Within two working days, make a public announcement that you are ready to do a buyback. And if you're a listed company, obviously, you have to do postal ballot. You have to get the post office involved. You have to send lots and lots of letters. You have to find out the address of each and every shareholder in your company. You have to post them through registered post. This offer for participating in the buyback. So this is a buyback request that you are sending through the postal ballot. And in addition to the postal ballot, you can also send them electronic reminders to participate in the process. Uh, make sure that within 30 days of this public announcement, you have completed the process of buyback also. Uh, 
uh, once you commence the buyback process, all the letters will be sent to the shareholders. Make sure that all the shareholders uh, are participating in this and relevant resolutions are passed with required majority. Once they start responding back to your letters that you sent through post, they will attach their share certificate and reply back to the same letter. So when you send a postal ballot request, you will also send an envelope, an empty envelope with postage that is already prepaid. And in that envelope, they will send their responses back. Are they agreeing to participate or not? If they agree to participate, they will fill in their DMAT account details and they will give you a approval to debit their DMAT account. And if they have a physical share certificate, they will send you the original physical share certificates along with the response letter. Once you start receiving the response letters, you have to start making entries in the register of buyback. You have to also enter details of consideration received by the shareholders from your company. You have to enter the details of the number of shares that you have cancelled. And if you have physical share certificates, you have to ensure that you mention the date when it is actually physically destroyed. Once you do all of this, your buyback process will be over. But before even you begin the buyback process, for safety purposes, SEBI always asks companies to open an escrow account to ensure that company doesn't defraud the different investors in the securities market. So if you're buying back shares worth 100 crores or less, 25% of that money should be deposited by the company into the escrow account. If you're buying back more than 100 crores, typically the excess amount of more than 100 crores will be deposited into the escrow account at 10% rate. So if you're buying back shares worth 150 crores, 25% of 100 crores is 25 crores. Additional 50 crores is there. 10% of 50 crores is 5 crores. So total 30 crore rupees will be deposited in the escrow account opened by the company that is initiating the buyback. Once all the shares are bought back, you will get a refund of this 30 crores from this escrow account. If you cannot complete the buyback within the time mentioned, this 30 crore will be debited from this escrow account and they will be paid to all the shareholders who participated in the buyback but couldn't get the money from you. So if you fail in completing the buyback, you will result in defaulting and getting your escrow account completely debited. At the end of this buyback, your entire share capital will be reduced and that is the ultimate end to what is the entire process of buyback. That is how this chapter pretty much works. Okay. So that is your uh, 16th chapter. And uh, if there are any queries or questions, you can ask. What else we can for each class? Any queries?